Hello, it's me, O3 Be Good. I'm about to do a commentary on Mario to Plumber. Enjoy. Am I hearing this correctly? A commentary on Mario to Plumber in 2013 in filmed off computer screen art vision? Okay then, I have the utmost faith that this won't end badly at all. And I'm going to be skipping to the parts I want to commentate on. Okay, I'm gonna fucking do a fucking review on fucking Legend of Zelda and fucking Butt Waker, fucking huge dick. And we're gonna start with the most important thing, the character design. Whoa, 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 that's not how you begin a review, dumbass. Watch your profanity. There are sometimes kids go on here on YouTube. Do you not have any respect for parents and kids? Do you not have any respect for the fact that YouTube as a site isn't intended for anyone under the age of 13? Also, keep that complaint he just made in mind because it's going to bite him in the arse throughout this entire video. You'll notice why in due time. Good God. The character design in this game is a fucking Japanese bullshit ripoff. Some sh hey, dumbass. They're Japanese, not Japanese. That shit. Some Dora Explorer eyes rip off. It is whoa, 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 whoa. He looks nothing like Dora the Explorer. What the fuck? This fucking gay. It's something like you see on a fucking Nick Jr. show. It's. Oh my god, this is nothing like Nick Jr. Doesn't even look close. It's fucking anime look like. It looks more like Avatar The Last Airbender, dumbass. Which, by the way, is a Nickelodeon show, which pretty much proves Mario to Plumber correct in that regard. Also, remember that video I played earlier where he complains about other people being an asshole to him? Is anyone in this world nice anymore? Anybody? Yeah, with all the times he's been calling Mario to Plumber a dumbass, I'm surprised he hasn't figured out the connection yet. And that's leaving aside the fact that <laughs> Mario to Plumber is an obvious troll that's been exposed multiple times as an obvious troll two years ago. <laughs> I really hate this character design. They should have put the link with the brown hair. The... Oh boy, where have we not heard this before? They should have put the fucking Sonic with the black eyes and the less... You get what I'm trying to say here, Mario to fucker. Oh, very respectful, dear sir. Very respectful. Also, really? A Richard Kuta reference? I guess it's natural since you're commentating on a topic that's also been dead since late 2011, but that doesn't mean I won't call you out for it. Brown undershirt and the cross shield to symbolize he's from, he, he believes in Christianity. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a fictional game set in a fictional world. There is no Christianity, there is no Jesus. In fact, if you played Ocarina of Time, there were three goddesses who created Hyrule. Din, Foray, and Nehru. Nehu, Nehru, whatever. But there's no god in this game. This doesn't even take all place on Earth, dumbass. This is fucking gay. What about me? Oh, like you? The old link back in the days. Like Legend of Zelda. Oh, boy. First you complain about Sonic being green-eyed and having those big fucking quills that we like to apparently shove up your ass. Which should have tipped you off that he was trying to troll people in the wake of the no all rested fiasco. They're at your ass. But apparently now we're complaining about Link not being the classic Link. Oh boy, what's next? You don't you don't like Mario because he's not wearing blue overalls and a red shirt or red overalls and a blue shirt? Good God. You are worse than the irate gamer. Is that all this video is going to be? Just repetitions of, oh boy, whoa, 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 Mario to Plumber is a dumbass, and name dropping old outdated subjects from three to four years ago? Good grief, no wonder the people who viewed your content don't respect you or take you seriously. There's nothing worth respecting. But we're here to talk about the HD version. It's a fucking remake, dumbass. Design, it's a fucking zero. It just fucking sucks. What? Oh, come on. It's just a design. Do the graphics really matter? No, dipshit. It's a gameplay. And now we're going to go to the fucking the story. The oh, God. Oh, my God. You, you sound like a horrible version of Spack. Three mixed with the irate gamer. Oh boy! So that's three outdated subjects you've referenced in this commentary. Okay then, I look forward to when you name drop Chad Warden because I can easily see you taking him seriously, XD. Story is the fucking same as the fucking 
original Wind Waker, so what the fuck? It's a fucking remake, dumbass! Do you not know what a fucking remake is? Do you not know what an obvious troll is? Also, for all the times you've dropped the F-bomb in this commentary, it seems like you don't respect parents or kids either. So you're basically going against your own preaching. Watch your profanity. There are sometimes kids go on here on YouTube. Do you not have any respect for parents and kids? Hey, dumbass. What the fuck? It's fucking anime, Airbender dumbass. It's a fucking remake, dumbass. The fucking sign. Mario to fucker. Mmm, hypocrisy. I love that smell. It smells like biscuits and gravy. Out of nowhere, from, uh, to be like the fucking hero in Ocarina of Time, even. Because he's not the reincarnation of Link from Ocarina of Time. He's supposed to be like a descendant. Good God. You are worse than Chris Bors. Oh my god, Chris Bors is horrible. He's a horrible AG AVGN ripoff, but he's better than you. Good god. At least he has the balls to play a game while reviewing. You don't, apparently. Yeah, this is the reason why going on scripted is my primary bugbear. Repetition. Pro tip 03 be good, if you're going to make a commentary that's 20 minutes or longer, you'd better not repeat yourself at all. And lord knows that you failed in that respect, didn't you? Know that game is kind of overrated, but it's just fucking- Yes, it's a little overrated, but it's also a good game. Yes, it gets a bit overrated. I mean, this game what came out 15 years ago, but yeah, I agree, it's a little overrated. But I do not agree with this shitty review, so let's continue. It doesn't make fucking sense how this fucking bag has green clothes, and um, the shield he gets too. But once he goes on his journey, he goes to fucking- Ganon's place first. Uh, that is not Ganon's place. It's the Forsaken Fortress. He tries to rescue his sister, which is giant bird snaps at the beginning of the game. Good God! Yes, Ganondorf inhabits that place, but that's not his fortress. If you remember in Ocarina of Time, he destroyed his castle so he could try to kill Link and Zelda. Duh! Feel the respectfulness. Feel the totally not asshole behavior. First? His sister got kidnapped, dumbass! So stupid. You're stupid, Mario. To fucker. Feel the respectfulness. Feel the- Wait, didn't you use that exact same insult earlier? Glitch in the Matrix! And get this. Whenever you go to the Master Sword Temple, there's fucking, like, stained glass windows of the sages. Uh they sealed up Ganon at the end of Ocarina of Time. Don't you even fucking pay attention to cutscenes in video games, dipwad? What does that even mean? You know what, never mind. That's not what Mario Diploma said. He was saying that the images of the sages are in the stained glass windows, and the fact that he wasn't necessarily complaining about that kind of makes me wonder, why did you bother interjecting in the first place? What are they trying to do? Fucking replace that with Jesus? There is no Jesus in this game! It's a fictional universe created by three fictional goddesses. Are you stupid? Are you dumb? No, but he's acting that way on purpose to get you as angry as you are right now. With all the F-bombs and vulgar comparisons, it's really hard to take him seriously, so I honestly don't think Mario Tablamar actually believes this. We're trying to replace Jesus with that fucking bullshit. Hey, dumbass! Like I said... This takes place in a fictional make-believe fantasy world. This has nothing to do with Christianity. If you were talking about Castlevania, I could understand. But you're not. This is Zelda. Stained glass windows are meant for having Jesus in them. Not I'm not going to say it again. Some fucking bullshit from Hentai. Hentai? They're not even fucking naked. You know what Hentai is, Mario the fucker? It's anime porn. No, ecchi is anime porn. Hentai is a term adopted by Western viewers from the Japanese word for pervert, used as the Western equivalent of the word ecchi. Mario to Plumber uses the word hentai as a derogatory term to describe anything anime-esque, because he's fully aware that anime and gamer culture are two subcultures that even to this day haven't caught on to the fact that Mario to Plumber is only going to go away if people ignore him. The fact that you're doing this video in the first place pretty much proves me right in that regard. 
And not only that, they're not even in their Ocarina of Time signs. They're fucking... It's to incorporate with the design of Wind Waker. They would look weird if they used the Ocarina of Time designs. Duh! And plus, this is on the GameCube originally, not the N64. What Waker designs? Oh, very funny. What are you, 13? Hey, the story is never with Charles the Master's sword. It's fucking... It's fucking, like, closed up. It, you have to get, you have to complete the game more dumbass. You modern moron who likes to shove hentai quills up his ass. What the fuck? I'm not gonna say anything. Even though you just did. You created a time paradox. <laughs> you know how much I love that clip. And I'm gonna end it here. Yeah, you heard me right. I'm not doing the rest of the video. I honestly can't bear any more of a third of the video. You want to know why? Because the entire video is exactly like this. Just him hurling insults at Mario Diploma, acting as if every single thing he says is a complaint that needs refusing when only a fraction of what he's saying actually is, and repeating the same overused mannerisms like, whoa, 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 good god, and dumbass, far beyond the point where they lose what little edge they had in the first place. Zero Three Be Good, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this, but this commentary was horrible. It already suffers from my usual complaint of going unscripted, resulting in a frequent repetition and awkward attempts at humor and insults. And the fact that you couldn't be bothered to download the video and instead wanted to do it all in one take with filming your computer screen with more shaky cam than a J.J. Abrams flick suggests to me that you only care about making these commentaries for the sake of convenience rather than to actually entertain anyone. And in response to your comment reply, no, the fact that you don't have a microphone doesn't excuse that, because microphones can often be really easy to come by, especially decent ones. And all of this is without factoring in one simple factor. Mario to Plumber should not have been worth your time. He is a troll. He's doing this deliberately just to get people like you angry at him. The whole of the commentary community has known this since 2011. That's two years ago. That's almost as outdated as some of the other people you brought up in this commentary, especially Spax3. Okay, I'm not saying that commentating on an old video is an inherently bad idea, I mean I have a script on my computer that discusses the ins and outs of this topic, but when the subject you're commentating on has either changed since then or hasn't changed in spite of the criticism, then that should have been a sign that you were wrong to consider it worth your time in the first place. So to conclude this video, this guy takes one of the most famously obvious trolls seriously, all the while embodying everything that's wrong with less than seasoned commentators, and you wonder why people don't respect you. What's going on guys, MGS Big Boss here making another video and I'm sure you all can guess what I'm going to be talking about. N4G, ruining the word bias and devaluing the 9 out of 10 score since 2006. Kojima's announcement of who was going to be voice acting Big Boss in Metal Gear Solid 5. Nah, no less trivial. A few things, and I want to comment on a few things as we go along for those of you who didn't see the interview with Kojima regarding this situation. This time, with Metal Gear Solid V, the themes are a little different from previous games in the series. We're taking on some very heavy subjects, such as race and revenge. This makes the tone much darker. As a result, I wanted Snake to have a more subdued performance, expressed through subtle facial movements and tone of voice rather than words. Sounds pretty amazing to me. I mean, it's more than can be said for the remake of Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> Showing the facial expressions by flipping the visor up. Ah, Hollywood thinks viewers are morons. Furthermore, the game takes place in 1984, when Snake is 49 years old. Therefore, we needed someone who could genuinely convey both the facial and vocal qualities of a man in his late 40s. It's different from anything we've done before. So I asked a producer friend of mine in Hollywood, Avi Arad, for advice. Now keep in mind that Kojima said he wanted Avi Arad on board because of the different direction the series is going. I say this because in mere moments, you'll notice that You've Seen My Truck certainly isn't going to. He's the one who introduced me to Mr. Kiefer Sutherland. Mistake number one right there. Hideo Kojima, through, his, through action, through his own words, shows us that he holds Avi Arad someone totally unrelated to the establishment of the Metal Gear Solid series, unrelated to the success of the Metal Gear Solid series. Starting to see what I mean, folks? Probably doesn't even know the history of the Metal Gear Solid series. 
Because, you know, it's not like there are tons of resources online with which to bring oneself up to speed on the Metal Gear Solid mythos, including lengthy, entertaining retrospectives. Never mind the fact that he could, oh, I don't know, play the games. No, ever since the great you've seen my truck wambulance explosion of 2013, all the old Metal Gear Solid games evaporated out of existence, leaving nothing but the hard to transfer knowledge of the fans. That's totally how bringing oneself up to speed works, isn't it? It holds his opinions over the fans. The fans who made Metal Gear Solid what it is. The fans who helped make it a success. The fans that helped make that game turn fucking profits for Konami. And he holds this guy's opinion to a way higher regard. He ignores our petition, ignores our pleas, ignores a fan opinion, and listens to this guy. Yeah, it's almost like he established himself as a fully controlling auteur and game designer or something. I'm sorry, but this is by no means the first time Kojima has done this. If Kojima really did cave into the fans' demands, which given the results of most committee design games is not a good idea, we wouldn't have had Raiden in the second game. This whole ignoring the fans for the sake of realising one creative vision thing isn't anything new. You should have known this if you really loved MGS as much as you say you do. And then not only that, he takes it a step further and praises this guy's opinion like it was an answer from God. And says, why didn't I think of that? Why did, like, as if, he, why shouldn't he have done that sooner? Why didn't he do that sooner? Having seen that clip you just played, I'm getting the feeling that you're just hyperbolically exaggerating what happened. All he did was look to alternate sources for stylistic choices, which does make sense since he flat out said the series is going in a different direction with themes and style. It's different from anything we've done before. So I asked a producer friend of mine in Hollywood, Avi Arad, for advice. He never said he's holding his opinion in a higher degree to that of his fans. Though given the whiny, pretentious image you portray in this video, I wouldn't blame him if he did. This is just unbelievable. I did not expect this whatsoever, especially from Kojima. And now, this is going to impact the game sales. I will not be buying this game. I won't even put that game in my console, whether it's used, borrowed, or bought brand new. This game will not touch my fucking PlayStation 3. Wow, one difference in creative decisions means you'll boycott the game. Never mind how there's little to no footage of MGS5 out and how people made the exact same unfulfilled promises when Left 4 Dead 2 came out, only to completely bail out on it and buy it anyway. Yeah, I don't see your claim holding up in the future. Though if it does, oh no, one person chooses not to buy the game. I'm sorry, but you do realise that boycotts only work if you're actually able to band together a massive number of people. And judging by the low view count on your video combined with the highest number of dislikes, I don't think you've succeeded in that regard. It's an honor to be able to play this character. This character has an unbelievable legacy, that there's a real personal quality to the character that I've connected to. I felt that he was the perfect fit in terms of age and performance. So, we made him an offer. I'm not a gamer and I even knew about this game. I was certainly keenly aware of the legacy of these games, the unbelievable success of these games. Kiefer immediately understood what I was looking for. I was very moved by his commitment to the project. So now we have this asshole. I mean, look at him. Look at this mother- does he look like a guy that could fucking voice Big Boss? I don't know, does this look like the guy to voice Ryu in Street Fighter 4? Even though he does. Does this look like the guy to voice Pain Wheel, even though she does? Does this look like the guy to voice the Joker, even though he's going to be? And since he later decided to bring in Kaifa Sutherland's speaking voice into the equation... Listen to him when he's talking! Listen to him in his movies! Then in that case, I'd just like to play you this clip. You know, I feel very attached to this character, obviously. I've been doing it for 15 years, and... Uh, I feel very attached to the fans. Yeah, that was your beloved David Hayter speaking. Just because a character has a different natural speaking voice doesn't mean they're going to use their natural voice for the character. Billy West would be very disappointed in you. This guy fucking played in a sandbox of cocaine all his life. And, and, and Kojima's saying, oh, this guy is the perfect choice? He's perfect for the role of Big Boss? The person that's perfect for the role of Big Boss is David Hayter himself. Where? Where? One voice actor changed. I haven't heard any clips from the new guy actually in the role, yet I'm going to assume the new guy is automatically bad. Boo hoo, where, where, boar face, ooty in the booty, but her fanboy whining tears into my David Hater love pillow. Where, where, where? But seriously, as much as I like David Hater, I just want to point out that his particular resume isn't quite as shining as Kaifa Sutherland's resume. 
Sutherland was in 24, Monsters vs. Aliens, A Few Good Men, and Bright Light's Big City. Now what roles does David Hayter have besides Snake? Too minor a role. Not a main character. Boring. Okay, that's a bit better. Background role. Generic undefined character voice. Dodgy developer practices. Wait, he was Captain America of all people? Yeah, it's a bit of a difference, isn't it? I will now skip to the next interview clip, since all he's going to do over the next half minute or so is repeat everything he's said previously, which tells me that his video suffers heavily from a lack of care and effort as a result of, say it with me viewers, going unscripted. Yeah, I'm not going to put you through that. In previous Metal Gears, Snake's emotions were expressed through phrases like, Kaz, are you okay? But this time, all he says is, Kaz? I wanted everything else to be expressed to the player through Snake's facial expression and vocal performance. Thanks to the top-notch acting, it's been a great success. I think it will turn out to be something truly special. Well, people, it's over. Metal Gear Solid as we know it, Metal Gear Solid as the fans know it. Oh, God, it's this part. It's over. Kojima's attempt to, quote-unquote, reinvent the game using the same old storyline using the same old characters, using the same old voice actors in Japan, is really reinventing the game. And uh, we got to, I mean, we got to talk with our wallets. We got to show Kojima that this isn't acceptable to the fans. Will you join in our butthurt who will be strong and whine with me? We wanted David Hayter as the voice actor and... He couldn't even listen to that one request we had of him. We had no other requests. How do you know that? Are you one with the minds of every single other Metal Gear Solid fan out there? For all you and I know, there could be fans out there who want the return of the Ape Escape bonus missions from the third game. Or maybe there are fans who want Snake to dual wield rocket launches. You don't know that. I don't know that. And no one can know that. So stop trying to speak for the majority. You just sound pretentious. But the one that we did have, he ignored. In all honesty, I really think we should all just mail Kojima, Wakasashi, or Atanto and just have him do the rest. Seppuku is the only way out of this one, I think. Or, or perhaps alternatives like just stopping development or releasing the game anyway in spite of fan demand, or perhaps working another character with David Hayter into another game. Yeah, glad to see you're still keeping that childish hyperbole of yours still in check. <laughs> Tell me how how it make well I mean why if Keith or Sutherland is so good why don't they why don't he just put him in the Japan version get rid of Akio Otsuka and just put Keith or Sutherland in the Japan version too because that would go against the standard movie aesthetic that Kojima intends for the different versions of the game since the first Metal Gear Solid he's always wanted to take elements from movie storytelling so it would make sense American actor for an American audience Japanese actor for a Japanese audience why do I need to explain this to you if Keith or Sutherland is bringing the character to life. I mean, you know, it's to, to an unprecedented level. Put them in Japan. See how Japan likes it. Just, just, just release an English version of Metal Gear Solid Five over. That's it. The Japanese subtitles. Because I mean, obviously he doesn't like listening to the fans. So why the fuck should he listen to them in Japan either, huh? And again, judging by your video, I can kind of see why he wouldn't want to. So, what's today's subject? Sorry, could you please re-edit that in a way that doesn't massively overestimate your audience's attention span? I could barely see that without hitting the pause button, and I shouldn't need to be inconvenienced like that. Excuse me for a minute. I need to take a step outside. Spoilers, he invokes the whole I'm going to calmly walk out and scream my head off while off-camera trope. Which I wouldn't mind if he didn't screw it up by being both horribly predictable and cranking the volume of the scream all the way up. True story, I knew the joke was going to be like that even on the first time I saw the video, so I turned the video's volume right down. And I still found it loud enough to declare the death of headphone users the world over. So today I'm going to talk about another show currently airing on Cartoon Network that I despise. I'm going to be ranting on Sonic Boom. Not that piece of crap Wii U game. Well. I will hand you some praise since you're not talking about Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, as that's been discussed one million times already. Eight seconds. Just for that one test card. 
and all for a generic statement that doesn't add anything. Just why? <laughs> Where to begin? Where to begin? Let, let, I'm just going to talk about... Before I get to the main issue I have with this show, I'm just going to talk about the animation. It's horrible. Animation should be the least of your concerns when ranting on a TV show, son. What? What? Someone who is complaining about a TV show that delivers itself through an animated medium wishes to talk about the animation? What manner of satanic rights are these? The CGI in this show is just really bad. I, I have no problem with the show being in CG. Then why did you say the CGI was bad? You just contradicted yourself. Yeah, no. He was making the point that the show wasn't bad for being in CGI in and of itself, just that it was the show's particular use of CGI that was bad. He's trying to qualify his opinion on the CGI by clarifying that he doesn't mind the fact that the show chooses to be in CGI, implying that he wouldn't have a problem with it if he found the CGI to be good, which he didn't. And this makes sense for him to do, since there do exist plenty of people out there who hate CGI just for the fact that it's CGI. In fact, this misinterpretation becomes all the more blatant when you repeat yourself one cutaway later. If it looks really really bad. Then why did you mention that you have no problem with the show being in CGI? And actually reading back what you just typed would have clarified that there's a difference between what medium a show portrays itself with and how well it executes the portrayal. I swear I haven't seen someone abuse the term contradiction this blatantly since rants are cool. So basically he's contradicting himself saying he doesn't care about views but then now he's saying he's gonna quit because he's not getting enough views. Like in my opinion it looks like it was made over a decade ago. And if it wasn't in HD, <laughs> it would still look like it was made over a decade ago, even if it was in HD, because I'm pretty sure in 2005, you know, they might not have had HDMI, but they had 480p or something. Actually, according to Wikipedia, HD existed ever since 2002. Here's proof. In February 2002, the project was officially announced as Blu-ray Disc, and the Blu-ray Disc Association was founded by the nine initial members. Yeah, that's nice and all, but that doesn't prove your point in the least bit, since that quote is in reference to Blu-ray, which is not the only HD format in the world. And even if it was, that quote alludes to the announcement of the format's name, not the actual release of the format. If you want to date us to the concept of HD, particularly with regards to TV, that dates as far back as the Muse standard used by the Japanese NHK system in the 1980s. Yeah, leaving aside the fact that Wikipedia can be edited by anyone, you see how amazing things get when you actually read your proof? <laughs> Let's talk about the, the storylines. They follow a very, very cookie cutter concept. A lot of the episodes just have extremely similar storylines. Here's the storyline for a bunch of episodes, I guarantee you. Sonic and the gang find Dr. Eggman. Dr. Eggman is doing something seemingly harmless, so they don't really care. However, by the middle or the end, near the end of the episode, they start to realize that Dr. Eggman is doing something bad. And so, Sonic has to outwit him and bash him and boom him and bam 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 bam. Dr. Eggman says, I'll be back! And he is, but he doesn't learn his lessons. And, uh, yeah. To be honest, not all the episodes follow that concept. You know, you might have a good point there. You know who agrees with you on that? Kablam Bandicoot 64. A lot of the episodes just have extremely similar storylines. A lot of the episodes, a lot of the episodes, a lot of the episodes, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the episodes. Yeah, a lot of the episodes, implying that he means the majority. As in, not all of them. In fact, later on in the video, in a clip which you leave in your commentary, by the way, Kablam Bandicoot says this. And now granted, there are episodes where they do something different, and... I suppose those are better, but... Yeah, when you feel this desperate to force your commentary to the point of arguing against a perspective the commentary target barely even holds, you don't deserve to have the rest of your point heard. Skip it! <laughs> Dr. Amyan does something seemingly harmless, Sonic and his friends believe it because they have no character development. No character development. Totally. Uh, Ultrasonic fan, you do realise that doesn't prove Kablam Bandicoot wrong, right? Again, leaving aside the issue of how reliable Wikipedia is as a source, that excerpt you showed there, 
That shows character traits, not development. Sure, character traits can come about as a result of character development, but that depends on whether the show actually shows any of it or not, which Kablam Bandicoot believes it doesn't. Now, whether he's right or not, that doesn't change the fact that panning across a poorly cropped screen cap of a Wikipedia page is a piss-poor substitute for a counter-argument that only serves to demonstrate that A, you can't present information coherently to save your life, and B, you weren't paying attention to what he was actually thinking about. Then again, given your accusation of contradiction earlier, that wouldn't surprise me. It's just the same thing over and over again. Now granted, there are episodes where they do something different, and I suppose those are better, but the writing in this show is just really unfunny most of the time. I might have laughed a couple times, but yeah, it's just really unfunny. Claims he laughed a couple times. Says it's unfunny. Twice. That makes sense. Actually, yes, it does make sense. You know why? I might have laughed a couple times. I might have laughed a couple times. 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 Semantics. You fail at them. And yeah, I know the show does have a lot of action in it, so comedy isn't the main focus, but the creators said... No, it is the main focus. The creators have said that this is mostly a comedy-driven show with some action in it. And what's wrong with that? At least the creators of the show know when to put in stuff that's not comedy related. What in the hell is that supposed to mean? All I'm getting from that is, the show's creators made this show so there's nothing wrong with the way they made the show. And in any case, that doesn't change the fact that Kablam Bandicoot didn't say they were wrong for emphasizing the comedy. He takes issue with the fact that the creators weren't entirely consistent with various announcements as to what the show is focused on. If anything, it'd be more prudent to complain about the fact that Kablam Bandicoot doesn't say exactly which of the creators said that, and where they said that. I mean, good lord, do you expect me to do this entire commentary for you? Get off my porch! Also, comedy-driven shows like Looney Tunes have been critically acclaimed shows. What's your point here? that the creators don't seem to be able to decide on whether the show should emphasize the comedy or the action, something which Looney Tunes has never been known to have a problem with as far as consistency of genre is concerned. So yeah, that's what they're going for here. Yeah, how dare they do whatever they want with their show. Hashtag Sonic Boom Hater Logic. Watch out, folks, we got a badass here firing their unreadably brief substanceless hashtags in the general direction of those mean, nasty haters. Though in all seriousness, please never make a jab like that ever again. That hashtag combined with the fact that you wear your fanboy status on your sleeve by way of your username and profile picture really isn't making you look any more dignified in this scenario. Comedy, and it's not funny. I mean, that... But... That's not even the main issue I have with this show. Um... You know, I would really appreciate it if you would have edited out these stutters. Or scripted this and your other rants. Keep that in mind next time you make a video. Hey, remember that needlessly lengthy, meaningless text card from earlier that gave across the impression of some kind of editing error or failed joke more so than anything else? Not that piece of crap Wii U game. Yeah, that totally didn't happen. Prefer your advice on editing to your heart's content, oh totally consistent stallion. The main issue I have with the show is the characters are bland. Read this closely. Well, I would if you'd stop panning and zooming the image like right, that. Right, so here's why the characters are bland. Sonic is the team leader. He's strong and heroic and not much else. Do you even do your research? Well, I don't know. Do you even have an actual counter-argument to that? Any actual proof that there's more to Sonic than what Kablam Bandicoot is saying? Any proof that doesn't involve vague gestures in the direction of a poorly cropped Wikipedia excerpt? Ultrasonic fan? Hello? Tails is the science geek. He can handle weapons, planes, and uh, he, he doesn't do much else. Knuckles is the strong idiot. Here we go again with this whole Knuckles is stupid debecile. Oh no! Someone said something bad about my favorite fictional echidna! My life is totally ruined! I'm so mad that someone who is not me doesn't like the things that I like! Why can't the world be populated by people who are exactly the same as me? First off, in projects that aren't part of the main canon, the characters being different should be pretty obvious to you all. Yeah, but if Superman at World's End proves anything, is that being non-canon doesn't stop something from being a terrible idea. Especially considering that many other allegedly non-canon portrayals of Knuckles don't hint at this. So the idea of Knuckles being all brawn and no brains for Sonic Boom just comes across as rather incongruous. Secondly, Knuckles really isn't that stupid. 
He's just clueless and ignorant. There's a difference. I'm not going to remotely touch on what that difference is, nor will I make any distinction as to what defines an idiot in this context. Please take my word for it. He just has some of the traits of an idiot. There are lots of dumb characters in cartoons. That it may be, the issue is that Knuckles doesn't benefit from being one of them, or at least he isn't a unique example of that. If anything, you saying that there are lots of dumb characters in cartoons only serves to make Kablam Bandicoot's point about the derivative nature of Sonic Boom even stronger, especially since he later says this. They just have the most stereotypical, cookie-cutter, generic character personalities you could ever think of, and nothing else. My brain cells die every time Ultrasonic Fan reaches for his keyboard. At this rate, I'll have lost basic motor functions by the 8-minute mark. He's not hes not that big in the head, but in the muscles he sure is strong and, uh... His biggest muscle is his Rush Hard Donger. Sticks the Badger is a new character and she's crazy and wild and, uh, oh, that's about it. Again, do you even do your research? Uh, no, you. Of the group, even though Sticks is a girl, but hey, at least she's not your generic damsel in distress or anything of that sort. Good for you. Now actually say something that matters, preferably without the typos. Amy's the girl-powered group, and uh, he, she's heroic like Sonic, and she's a girl, and that's pretty much it. Doctor Eggman is the goofy, evil genius guy, and uh, he's really goofy, and that's pretty much it. See where I'm going, that? They just have the most stereotypical, cookie-cutter, generic character personalities you could ever think of, and nothing else. They are the bare-bones characters. They are the most basic- Alright, how redundant can you possibly get? <laughs> oh my word, that is hilarious coming from you! Weren't you the guy who repeated several phrases throughout the past few minutes and threw an occasional meaningless quips throughout the video? Ah, I love the smell of hypocrisy in the morning. But I just described all these characters. It, that's it. There's nothing else to them. Nothing. I mean... It... Word of advice. Windows Movie Maker is your best friend. People, let me tell you about my best friend. Please notice the joke I stole from Youngblood and overlook the poorly timed audio editing. I only have seven dollars. Can I be a popular commentator now? It's, it's insane. And no, the secondary characters like the townspeople. Um, Doctor Eggman has these weird robot henchmen. These two weird. I, I forgot their names. You mean these two? No, none of them are interesting too. Oh, shut up! Like you could produce a better show. Damn, <laughs> But in all seriousness, if you really subscribe to the belief that experience has an exact correlation to credibility, then considering the piss-poor presentation I've seen throughout your video, you are one to talk about being able to produce a better show. You can't even make a competently made cutaway commentary for crying out loud. By the nature of this very video being a text commentary with no audio aspect on your end, I can tell that. <laughs> oh, but it gets better. Wait a minute. I'm a writer on the upcoming fan made my life as a teenage robot reboot. Okay, so he's a writer for a reboot, a show that no one really cares about anymore. Oh, I'm sorry, I must be hallucinating. What were you saying about people caring about the reboot? I mean, it was cancelled in 2009. Ahem. <clears throat> Firefly, a sci-fi western with a passionately devoted fanbase and a status as one of the most beloved cult sci-fi TV shows ever made. When was Firefly cancelled? 2002. Seven years before My Life as a Teenage Robot was cancelled, and yet the fanbase is still as active as it is to this day. Your stance on the lifespan of fan bases is meaningless. Plus, I combed through his channel, and I didn't see anything that gave any updates on that whatsoever. Excuse me, but have you just never looked in a mirror your entire life? I mean, you preach about not doing research, and yet if you yourself would have done some research, you'd have found the channel devoted to the reboot in question, which, surprise surprise, has two update videos. Common sense dictates that Kablam Bandicoot wouldn't want to give updates like this on his channel so as to keep his content for those only interested in his content, while people who want updates on the reboot could get it from the channel devoted to the reboot. Hell, this is the first time I've heard of both this reboot and the show it serves as a reboot of, and even I managed to figure all this out. You are the last person who should be whining about people who don't do their research. 
Even ignoring that, all of this is undermined by one simple question that hangs over this entire cutaway about Kablam Bandicoot's involvement in the reboot. And it goes as follows. What does this have to do with the part you cut away from? You know, n none of them. Just none. I... N you know, for a writer of an upcoming fan-made show reboot, not scripting or editing your videos is really unprofessional. Okie dokie, Mr. Tedious Poorly Edited Know You Laden Text Commentary. Horrible, and that's why this show fails. If you have interesting characters, you will not be able to tell any interesting stories. Did you catch that? If you have interesting characters, you will not be able to tell any interesting stories. Up, uh, nostalgia critic, help me out here. Ah, substituting a nostalgia critic clip in place of trying to make any kind of comedy yourself. The very mating call of the creatively bankrupt. What, my expectations were set low enough already? Pretty much nothing that comes out of this guy's brain can disappoint me at this point. Even though the stories in this show are already cliched, the stories in this show are already cliched. Here's a challenge for y'all. Take a shot every time he repeats himself. You waited until 8 minutes into a 9 minute video to invoke the drinking game trope? This would normally be the part where I'd make a remark about how structure isn't your strong suit, but I'm only left wondering what your strong suit is. And knowing how this video turned out so far, I don't think there exists an answer to that. And here's a description of one particular episode. Yeah, I'd let you do that, but... A lot of the episodes, a lot of the episodes, a lot of the episodes, a lot of the episodes... <laughs> so, yeah, that's the biggest problem I have with Sonic Boom. The characters are just... Screw this. I'm skipping. Yeah, let's skip mid-sentence without even justifying it with trying to avoid repetition like you did earlier. I don't see how anyone can relate to these characters or become attached to them. Oh, boohoo. People can have whatever opinion they want. Get over it. Hypocrisy and irony live together in perfect harmony. It, it, it's pathetic. It really is. But, yeah. Apparently, this show actually does well in ratings. Because Sonic Boom is a highly successful show. Yeah, tell me something I don't know. I can't. If anything, you could have easily pointed out how he goes on the basis of the show being watched very often and not necessarily positively received on the basis of that. I'm not trying to defend Kablam Bandicoot, nor am I saying that I'd agree with him, but frankly, speaking from the perspective of someone who hasn't seen the Sonic Boom cartoon, I'm more inclined to believe him than you, seeing how you rely entirely on misquotations, no you arguments, vague citations of dubious tangentially related sources, and going so far as to miss points that are very easily debunked in and of themselves. Like that one. Yeah, um, I... It, it's unbelievable, like... Not only does it have uninteresting characters, horrible animation, generic stories, you know, it airs at 7.30 on Saturday mornings with barely any advertising, and it just doesn't, I don't see how this show even does well. It is because many people actually like it, and there's nothing wrong with that. Literally the next clip that plays. No, no, actually I do, now that I think of it. Brand recognition. Yeah, you're willing to conveniently ignore the slightest notion of brand recognition being a factor in this? Why am I even surprised? Again, we're talking about someone who wears their fanboy status on their sleeve. Kids just say, oh, Sonic! And just watch it anyways. Not all kids like Sonic. You know that, right? That is not what he is saying. He's saying that kids are more likely to gravitate towards the comfort zone of a series spearheaded by a character as recognizable and beloved as Sonic and Don is English even your first language! I guess it's going. It's probably gonna get a second season and just be like Johnny Test, where it just. It's cheap to make. Johnny Test used Flash. Sonic Boom uses CGI. See the difference? Yes, at least I would if that was even relevant. What makes you think that CGI of the caliber of Sonic Boom isn't cheap to make? Got nothing? Well, fair enough, just don't be surprised if people start assuming that your rose-tinted goggles are showing. And so they keep making more episodes. Even though nobody wants it, except, I don't know, for kids for some reason, but... What do you expect? 
Sonic Boom is a children's cartoon. Of course it's not going to appeal to anyone outside of its main target audience. And you clearly love the show, what with you making this entire video, so... <laughs> what does that say about you? Whatever. And just to torture myself some more, I'm going to look at comments of the video. No, screw that, I'm ending it here. I'm not gonna let you kill off any more of my brain cells. So with that said... What, you people were really surprised at the fact that a Sonic fan did something mind-numbingly anti-intellectually stupid? You can practically tell the seasons by what the Sonic fanbase does in the wake of a new addition to the franchise. Ah, the Bandicam watermark. It's like I'm in that seedy part of Steam Greenlight again. <laughs> I'm doing a commentary because screw you, this video annoys me, and my avatar didn't cut out. Because emo. Wait, 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 what the hell was that? Was that an intro? Hmm, was the short clip at the start of the video displaying the name in question an introduction to the video? Does Motorhead play rock and roll? Look, I get it, it's a bit unique and he's changed it now, but still, put some damn effort in! That's not an intro, this is! Yeah, that's nice and all, but it really seems like you're just getting on Gamertron's case for his intro being minimalistic and therefore not having effort. And what exactly is wrong with that? What's wrong with not emphasizing the intro if that's not what the focus of your content is? I especially say this seeing as I've dabbled in the realm of minimalist intros before, as shown here in my entry for Whenever the Hell 2014. I mean, I did make a little jab of dread at Gamertron's intro in my commentary on him, but it was painfully obvious that I was joking. And since you seem rather intent on defining an intro on the basis of that one you showed just now, let's take a look at what you have for an intro. With that in mind... <sighs> iMovie text, anime clip, Metal Gear Rising, footage notice the Bandicam watermark, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 footage that isn't even filling the screen right, brief flashes of Blaze Blue, Zelda, Kirby and Smash Bros, and a blurry anime clip with a fake production company name to finish. There are times when my brain might not be working right, but I'm fairly sure your intro didn't exactly have much in common with the one you played as an example of a real intro. And the weird pacing of the last few clips makes me disinclined to believe how much effort went into that intro as far as post-production is concerned. Unless there's something you neglected to tell us, in which case you owe me for the 20 seconds of my life I'll never get back. Hey, hi, how you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show, and welcome back to yet another Top 5. You know, there's a lot of hatred. There's a lot of unnecessary hatred and anger and spitefulness towards video games. From the very gamers that play them and love games, or at least they claim to love games, with some of the nasty, evil shit that is said in comment sections nowadays. Yes, but that happens on most comment sections on websites, not just video games though. He's not saying that gaming is unique in that regard, he's bringing up gaming specifically to bring the focus to the topic at hand, namely that there is a consensus as to games that receive negative attention that he personally thinks is undeserved. <laughs> While you have every right to dislike a game or not be interested by a game, to simply hate these five video games and to call them bad games is just wrong and a lie. Well, this is going to be fun. With quality reasoning like that, this is just going to be great. Excuse me, could you slow down your speech pace just a tad and up the clarity a bit? It's really getting mangled by your slightly muffled mic quality. No joke, when I first saw this video, I played this part like five times before eventually giving up on trying to interpret the artificial snark. Like, say what you will about my habits when it comes to speech pace, but at least the point of the interjections usually does come across well. I mean, the fact that my recording quality doesn't sound like it came from the Marshmallow universe certainly helps as well, but still! I hate you! I hate you! I yeah, nah. No. I'm skipping the number transition due to be utterly horrible and ear-grating, and probably stolen an animation. Well, that would imply that Gamertron took credit for the animation, which I really don't get the impression that he did, even if I was to ignore the giant throbbing watermark peering at me like a flirtatious Spanish courtesan. Mmm, tits. But then again, that's assuming that you meant what I thought you meant, which, partly for reasons I've alluded to in the previous cutaway, is rather uphill work. Bandicam logo! Bandicam logo! For the record, one of the entries he skipped over discussed Titanfall, and I fist pump in joy for that game's presence on the list because I love Titanfall too. 
In fact, I don't recall many people really hating Titanfall all that much, I just remember it as a case of not living up to the hype and... Wait a minute, am I doing this commentary for you? Get back in the chair, Sharingan, I'm not your ghostwriter. Number 5. Call of Duty, the video game series. Wait, 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 what? Wasn't it you who put Call of Duty pretty damn high on the games that I hate, but everyone else likes? A list that has been criticised multiple times by a few commentators. Oh, Christ on a bicycle, this is who I'm inspiring. Okay, let's just take a look-see at that video you're obviously alluding to, since my first impression on your wording comprehension is about as high as a limbo dancer on the tube. Play the clip! Number 7. Every single Call of Duty that has been released after Modern Warfare 3. He specifically stated that he said the series from Modern Warfare 3 onwards was where it was getting overrated, and he specifies the series as a whole in this specific list. Hell, even ignoring that, if you looked at his segment you'd know that even he's aware of this, yet nonetheless praises them for being mechanically well done. It has become a household name. And that pisses a lot of people off. Honestly, me included. I put these games at number 5, at the bottom of the list because I can kind of understand the hatred towards these games. If we were to look away, look away from the influence that Call of Duty has created, if we were to look at the games themselves, they're not bad games, guys. They are well-made products, there is obviously work put into them. The actual games themselves, the gameplay, the graphics. It's all functional, the games are functional, the games are good looking, and the games can be fun to play. Thanks Pepsi Man commercial! But hey, maybe I'm just jumping the gun a bit, I mean, you'll probably come to that part eventually. Yeah, nah, I'm skipping this in the Titanfall entry because I've nothing to say on this. Or I can find a more intellectually stimulating thing to do with my time. <laughs> But hey, you want to know the dumbest part about this part of the video? He essentially tried to paint this as a case of Gamertron being inconsistent with his opinion by making the same allusion to his Games I Hate But Everyone Else Likes list that he made. A slight problem with that though. When was that list uploaded? July 2014. Now when was this list uploaded? Last April. 75% of an entire year later. I mean, unless you're going to try and convince me that Gamertron put himself into cryogenic suspension as part of an elaborate conspiracy theory to make people think that a case of hypocrisy is nothing more than a less than 100% consistent opinion, I don't think you can really get away with leaving out a little tidbit like that without even remotely considering the notion that, hey, maybe enough time has passed for his opinion to have changed. I mean, you admit that you have nothing to say about this part, yet it's like you still feel determined to force a criticism alongside the snark as a means of less criticising Gamertron and more making him look worse than he actually is. Take it from me, you will regret doing that! Now, you are free to dislike Watch Dogs. If it isn't your kind of game, if it doesn't suit your tastes, that's fine. But if you hate Watch Dogs, if you genuinely hate it with a passion and think it's a bad game, I have to ask, what the hell is wrong with you? Well, actually no. Watch Dogs is a fun game and I love it, but that doesn't mean others can't hate it as well. Especially because the reasons that a lot of people provide for not liking it are actually pretty good sometimes. A majority of- So you feel like being one of those people? Is that really going to be the end of your cutaway? You're not going to say, bearing in mind that I also like Watch Dogs, how people defend the boring storyline, the misleading reveal trailer, the server problems on the game's launch, and the pop-in and optimization problems of the PC version. Sharingan? Dude? Are you there? Can you hear me? It's, it's dark in here. So... Many... Spiders! The people who hate Watch Dogs and say nasty things about it, usually all boils down to the same thing, them repeating the same thing over and over again. The gunplay is bad, the driving is bad, the story is bad. Well, actually yeah, the story is bad, and yes, the driving is pretty weird. These are two good points that go against what you're saying, and how? Well, the story, it's very silly, but tries to be serious, and it can get quite stupid with repetitive missions and unnecessary characters. He's not going against what he's saying. He's giving examples as to what Watch Dogs is usually criticised for, so he can give context as to why he thinks the game is hated so much, for the sake of contrasting it with his own opinion. Please pay attention, there'll be a quiz later. Just calling everything bad. It's all bad. It's all bad. There's a difference between disliking something and something being actually bad. I mean, let's look at Watch Dogs objectively. 
You can't just look at something objectively like that to justify its spot on the list. Technically you can, I mean that's basically what Gamertron did with Call of Duty earlier in the video. It kind of ties into the mechanical aspect of the game, such so as how well it runs, what the controls feel like, visual fidelity, variety of things to do, things that make gaming, as Total Biscuit once put it, just as much a science as it is an art form. Sure, the subjective reasons such as story engagement, character likability, replay value and fun factor can go against the notion of objectivity just as much as it can work with it, but Gamertron isn't really denying denying that so much as looking past it to find merit. Does it have a lot of content to justify its price value? Absolutely. Yeah, but just because something has a lot of content doesn't mean it's instantly good. Like Sonic 06 or Ride to Hell, that had a ton of content, doesn't make these games good or worth the price point. Content amount and the resultant impact on the game can still enhance a game, you know. And bringing up two examples of poorly received games that had a lot of content isn't going to change that. And speaking of which, you're comparing Watch Dogs, a game whose reception was primarily mixed and mostly centered around failing to live up to the hype, to Sonic 06 and Ride to Hell. Two games that were more egregiously unfinished and poorly made and critically panned as a result. Hmm, there are two fast food restaurants nearby and they both do the same amounts of equally appealing fries, but which one would I rather buy them from? The McDonald's chain with a level 5 health inspection rating that keeps everything in pristine condition, or the nearby stand that serves the fries in loose bundles of greased up newspaper that serves as naught but prime fodder for nearby seagulls? Yeah, something tells me that it was wise of me to know that function matters just as much as quantity. Or if I may give you the short version of this analogy, you do realise that you're not proving Gamertron wrong, right? The graphics are good. They are above average. They are quality. Not exactly. The sound effects and textures and voice acting, yes. But the music in Watch Dogs is actually really bland and very generic. Thank God for Jesus Bit My Hot Rod. Oh wait, that's a licensed song. Not made by the game. Oops. Too bad he was talking about the graphics and didn't bring up the sound design anywhere at all in the part that you just cut away from, thus rendering this entire interjection a load of hot air that would have been best spent saving the trees from dying out. Is the audio work good? The voice acting, the sound effects, the music? Yes, they're all good, they're all quality. Oh, now he brings up the sound design. Now I understand everything. It was all because Sharingan cut away at completely the wrong point. And this was the person who preached earlier about Gamertron not putting in effort. Can somebody come and kill me, please? Oh what, because Watch Dogs didn't live up to the hype that you generated? The unrealistic parasitic lie that is hype? Because you fell for it, and the game didn't live up to it, as no game ever does. Parasitic lie. Well, it's just my opinion, but here are some games that live up to the hype in my book. Ooh, Jaunty Gumption by Kevin MacLeod. <laughs> Wonder how Sharon Gunn found out about that piece of music. Not so bad now, eh? That doesn't change the fact that Watch Dogs didn't live up to the hype that had been building up over the course of two years, and it really doesn't change the fact that the game was pushed hard as the definitive next-gen experience, a label that implies very lofty ambitions. If anything, the biggest problem with Gamertron's segment here is how he blames the audience for falling for the hype, despite the fact that Ubisoft did indeed play a part in it thanks to the boundless amounts of marketing, the initial reveal of which, as it turns out, was misleading thanks to the visual downgrade. <laughs> I'm skipping the Evolve entry as his reasoning is bogus because that game's DLC is unjustifiable. Oh no, cosmetic DLC that doesn't tangibly affect the gameplay and whose only problem is the confusing way it was sold to the audience. And really, shouldn't Gamertron's reasoning being bogus be a reason for you to not skip over the segment? I mean, what exactly stopped you from doing that over the past segment on Watch Dogs just now? This could have been an opportunity to debunk what he said about the DLC for Evolve, and it was standing there right in front of you practically shaking its ass. 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 The hate is easily DMC Devil May Cry. Nope, nope, no. How is he gonna justify this? Well, he doesn't. He doesn't justify it well at all. So, so, a, a, a bad justification is the same as a lack of justification? I, 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 Your trial period has expired. Please fornicate with your sister to continue. The amount of hatred DMC Devil May Cry got back in the day in 2013, and even shockingly still gets today, is abhorred, 
horrible, disgusting. The amount of hatred, a campaign, a simple campaign of hatred that was directed towards this video game and its developer was simply evil. It was fucking evil. No, it was not. The hate that DMC Devil May Cry got was very well justified. Why? Simple. The main reason Devil May Cry fans were upset about the changes made to this reboot was because we haven't got a real Devil May Cry game in some time. And Gamertron is going to try and argue why the anti-hype is unjustified as per the premise of the video, leaving aside the fact that the aesthetic and simpler weapon mechanics are the only things separating this game from a finger quotes real Devil May Cry game. How do you keep forgetting this, you flaccid bratwurst? Death threats towards the developers unrealistic, over-the-top, critical examinations and nitpicking of the game. People who literally made multiple Metacritic accounts just to lower the game's score. On Metacritic! That's just wrong! It's just fucking wrong! Well, I'm willing to guess that this isn't exactly the first time of people making multiple accounts to score a game low. And what a surprise, that's the entire interjection. No examples whatsoever. At this point, I would say that I'm fairly sure a quick Google search would have you covered for examples. But guess what? I already did that! A glance at this Eurogamer article shows that it happened to Toy Soldiers and Bastion about four years ago, and I also found this thread on GameSpot's forum that alludes to review bombing occurring in the case of Mass Effect 3. Hell, if you want a more recent example, I even found this post on r slash Undertale that points out how 32 negative reviews of Undertale appeared on Metacritic. This is easy stuff! How's a quick Google search so easy to forget? Because when you look at the actual video game, objectively, DMZ Devil May Cry is a genuinely good product! Here we go with your objectiv objectifications again. Yeah, let's just ignore the fact that Gamertron is right in a sense and just use that for the sake of a poorly edited, stumbly, awkward interjection for the sake of cutting away that gets Gamertron's wording completely wrong by assuming that objectively and objectification are interchangeable terms. Good job, matey, you get a gold star! <laughs> has enough content to validate its price tag. My earlier example still holds true. Just because a game has content... <laughs> You can't tell me DMC Devil May Cry is not a graphically impressive game. You're lying if you're not. You are honest to God lying and making a BS if you're saying that the graphical fidelity of DMC Devil May Cry is below average. That's a simple lie. Lighting is good, textures are good, animations are great. Also, the color, the color palette of this game, the art style, mwah, magnifico. Such a wonderful emphasis on color. So, good graphic doesn't equal a good game. But they can enhance a mechanically solid game, which Gamertron has already said it is. And this is leaving aside how the visual design and color variety is significantly greater in this game when compared to, say, Devil May Cry 3. Yeah, I said it. Put it this way, say what you will about DMC's levels, at least I remembered them. The scene where you're wandering around an upside down city, the scene where you're escaping a crumbling fairground, the scene where you're wandering through a soft drink factory and fight a screechy foul mouthed demon using her bile for soft drinks, and the scene where you fight not Bill O'Reilly after travelling through a platforming segment designed like flashy news idents. Now, compare that to Devil May Cry 3. I challenge you to name that many level premises off the top of your head that don't involve wandering around dark gothic corridors. I'll give you the strip club near the start of the game and the level inside a giant monster's stomach as freebies. Also, this game looks poop compared to Devil May Cry 4. As I can clearly tell from the complete lack of footage, good job blurry anime still, pass backwards over go and hammer your 200 pounds. <laughs> This remake slash reboot slash spin-off bothered you so much, why did you even pay it attention? If you don't like something, then don't pay it attention, and it won't bother you! Wow, now you're result resulting to the if you don't like it, don't watch it, slash play it thing. Now, how is anyone supposed to know their opinions on something if they don't pay any attention? Yeah, let's just ignore the fact that this game was given a massive advertising push, making this game hard to ignore, which combining that with the effectiveness and frequency of vocal complaining makes a complaint like this all the less surprising. Let's also ignore the fact that people persistently hated DMC's direction even long after they could have started ignoring it, which is much closer to the mindset of what Gamertron was talking about, as evidenced in the Metacritic review bombing and the clip that immediately comes next. Instead, what did you guys choose to do? 
Waste hours of your life creating a campaign of hatred for a video game that didn't affect you. Let's also ignore the fact that I sometimes sleep without a shirt on and- Wait, wait, who wrote this? <laughs> To call DMC a shit game or a bad game, that's just wrong. And if you think DMC Devil May Cry is a shit game, a bad game, then I'm sorry, buddy. You don't know what a good video game is then. <laughs> no, screw you. Final thoughts? Die! <laughs> no, Cameo Bams, you are not. Hell, Electric Unicycle Crew, you are not.